Hi, folks. Chris Voss here from the ChrisVossShow.com. The ChrisVossShow.com. Hey, we're coming here with another great podcast. Certainly appreciate you guys tuning in. Be sure to refer you to the podcast, your friends, neighbors, relatives, dogs, cats. Have you recruited someone to listen to the Chris Voss Show or bug them? I mean, seriously, if you really want to bug somebody, uh, tell them to subscribe to ChrisVossShow.com. Tell them to go to thecvpn.com or ChrisVossPodcastNetwork.com and uh, tell them to subscribe to the show. That or just steal their phone and subscribe to all nine shows that you can find there. Uh, also go to YouTube.com forward slash ChrisVoss. Today we have Dennis Yu on the show. He's the Chief Executive Officer of Blizz Metrics. It's a digital marketing company which partners with schools to train young adults. Dennis's mission is to provide education at no cost to students. Uh, he's got uh, programs that center around mentorship, helping students grow their expertise in digital marketing, drive leads and sales by managing ad campaigns for enterprise clients like the Golden State Warriors, Nike, and Rosetta Stone. He's an internationally recognized lecturer in Facebook marketing and has spoken over 730 times in 17 countries spanning five continents. I'm just getting tired of thinking about how much work that was. Um, That's, a lot of flying. That's five million miles of flying. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of air miles there. There you go. Yeah. It, it includes uh, keynotes at uh, L2E, PubCon, Conversion Conference, Social Media Marketing World, Glutagen. 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 Yes. Oh, wow. There you go. And the Marquito Summit. And he's also featured in uh, a lot of different things. Welcome to the show, Dennis. How are you doing, buddy? Hey, good, Chris. Good, good, good. It's wonderful to have you on. Uh, so give us your .com so people can look you up and check out all the wares that you have on the interwebs. Yeah, just go to dennis-u.com. D-E-N-N-I-S-Y-U.com. Or just Google me. DennisU.com. And yeah, I mean, Dennis is everywhere. Holy shit. This guy is a master of Facebook marketing and everything else. Um, so Dennis, uh, give us a little bit of your origin story. Tell us a little bit about who you are and what, how, how you got here. I'm a search engine engineer. I built the analytics at Yahoo 20 years ago. I'm a math guy. I'm Asian. So that's how you know I'm good at math. <laughs> wow. And okay. I love data. I used to compete in math competitions. And I found that Social media is a great place with a lot of data if you know what you're doing. And it mm -hmm. just so happens that if you do advertising on social media and you follow a framework that the algorithm likes, you can drive a lot of sales. And so I've trained up thousands of people to be able to start their own agencies to serve local businesses and trained hundreds of thousands of local businesses on how they can drive more leads. Plumbers, dentists, doctors, real estate agents, mortgage brokers, garage door mechanics, all these guys. And we've talked about this before. Uh, in fact, uh, conversations that we had earlier, we talked about how this is a great time to get into marketing on Facebook because yeah. the ad cost has come down quite a bit. We've not seen traffic at this price since 2012. Holy crap. And that was when it was starting. Yeah, really. yeah, that was when it was like 25 cent CPM. So you get clicks consistently for a nickel. And <laughs> the pandemic, in spite of all the bad things that have happened, the silver lining to this cloud is that people are spending more time online and it's increasing. And the cost of the traffic has decreased because a lot of businesses can't afford to advertise. So yeah. if you know supply and demand and economics, the supply has gone way up and the demand has gone down. The net effect is the cost of the traffic is a quarter of what it used to be. And I know so, on your, go ahead. If you want to take market share away from your competitors, now is a great time to invest. It might not mean you drive sales immediately, but you're definitely going to drive market shares. Things start to open up. And as we talked about before, the, the, uh, this is the most important time to, to be marketing uh, in times like if, these and let people know that their business market. is open. Yeah. yeah. If you can't afford to advertise, you can still every day be telling everyone that you're open. What percent yeah. of businesses, Chris, do you think are telling everybody, hey, we're open. You can still call us. Maybe our hours are limited, but you can still come to our website. We're still willing to chat with you. We can still book an appointment. You can still buy a gift certificate for when our restaurant opens another time. What percent of people are saying that they're open? I would say 5% maybe. And those are usually big conglomerates I'm getting emails from or on their apps. And then of those who even say they're open, what percent of them are consistently every day saying, hey, today is you know Sunday, whatever, June 15th or something like that. And we're open. We're open at 10 a.m. I'm pretty what sure that's the Del that? Taco app that's the only one doing that. <laughs> they're not doing that. <laughs> My, my buddy Mark and I, we were driving around in LA yesterday and we're looking at restaurants we want to go eat at with our friends and we're clicking on each of them and it says, you know, in the, in the, 
a Google three pack. We do a local search and it shows three items. That's called the, the Google three pack. And each one of them, it says this, the hours of this restaurant, whatever may or may not be open because of COVID-19. So then what do you do? If you don't know if they're open, you're either like, mm, I'll either drive there and check it out or I'll just look at the next guy or I have to call them mm -hmm. and say, Hey, I just want to know your thing says you close at 10 PM, but are you actually closed? How many mm -hmm. times have you been to a place where like you thought it was open because you looked at the website yep. or Yelp or Google and it said it was open and then you went there and it wasn't? That's happened to me on both ends. Yeah. And so a lot of times they haven't updated their hours because some yeah. companies like a lot of the Walmarts and stores here in Utah, they, they used to be 24 hours and they changed their hours. And then, yeah. so then you're like, well, I thought you were open 24 hours. <laughs> Because your like, website says you're still open and your yeah. Yelp and your Google says you're still open. Yeah. Unless people so update like their Google to, thing, no one knows. Yeah. I, I went to the local grocery store here, the fries, and it closes at nine. Normally they close like 1 a.m. So you have all these people who buy beer at the at, you know last minute or something like that. And mm -hmm. I remember coming out of the store, I'll go there. If I know they're closing at nine, I'm sort of a jerk and I'll go there at you know, 845 because that's just <laughs> kind of like what I do. And so I'll be walking out of the store at 9 p.m. And then other people are parking thinking that they're just going to go in there and buy groceries and they realize they can't get in. I'm thinking you guys are idiots, right? Cause you are, how disappointing, right? You guys, they're walking up and the, and the guy who's like closing the door is like, no, no, sorry, we're closed. Come back tomorrow morning at 7. AM. Right. Think about how much business those people are losing yep. right there. How embarrassing that is. It makes it look like you can't trust anything they have to say because they're not even keeping their stuff updated. Do you know how easy that is to fix on Google and Yelp and your website and all that? It's probably really easy, huh? Yeah, it takes claim seconds. It and and, and how many sure times is someone, is someone searching for your business? And, they, and you, let's say you, you do a good enough job in your search engine optimization that you show up in the local three-pack. And two of them, it doesn't have that warning where it says, this business may or may not be open. You might want to check with them. You know, that orange warning where it says right there. And then one of those is your business. And your business says, and you know, Google puts a warning across your thing, like this business might not be open. How mm -hmm. much business are you losing? Because people are like, mm, I don't really know, but I'm just going to call one of these other guys instead because I need a chiropractor yeah. or because I need to get my car fixed or because like whatever it is that you sell. You're losing business if you're not doing this. And it's the stupidest, easiest thing to fix. And, and that's and what we do all day long. We, we help people with the dumbest of things. It doesn't mean they're dumb. It just means that they don't realize that there's just six or seven things that they mm -hmm. need to do that are easy, that don't cost any money, that will help them when it's tough to generate sales. I mean, if, you're, if you're not generating sales, it's for sure because of one of these things. And it, it doesn't require hiring a consultant or anything to do. It's easy to fix. And, and people are searching for you, you know? Yeah. It's kind of like- You're not even showing up. Your website doesn't load. You have all these warnings that, like, it's <laughs> like you, you don't even want them. You can't find your phone number there. There's no maps and directions. Mm -hmm. It's like you're telling everybody, I don't want any business. That's what yeah. most, most small businesses, that's where they are. They think that they have to try really hard or that Google and Facebook are penalizing them because, oh, Facebook wants me to spend money. No, the actually, the, the problem is you. <laughs> the problem me? is that you are not making it easy for people to spend money with you or contact. Damn it, me. You, it's like you're putting barbed wire around your business and now you're, mm -hmm. you're wondering why people aren't buying from you. Well, you and I see this in a lot of companies. They just think that, well, I put up a website. Doesn't everything just Oh, happen? yeah, I checked that box. <laughs> I hired some, some teenager to do my Twitter. Right. Yeah. I, geez, my nephew who's 12 does Twitter when he's not posting on uh -huh. TikTok. <laughs> 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 you know, the one thing I, back in the old uh, uh, era of brick and mortar, I remember going to restaurants and, or drive-ins. And uh, I mean, it's hard to imagine that someone the size of me goes to drive-ins, but I know. Um, but I would go to our drive-ins and you would see sometimes they would come up with like really stupid drive-in policies. Like one that I used to always hate was when they don't even understand the flow of the traffic and the order. Like one of the reasons you have a drive-through extension out front is, is to take the order so it can start cooking. So the shit will right. be done by the time you get to the front. And so right. any rest, any fast food restaurant, I've studied a lot, clearly look at me. Um, you know, they, 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 they'll do this thing where some new gal will come along and she'll, she, when you pull up to the speaker, she'll be like, Hey, can you wait a few minutes? We're behind. And you're like, you know, if you actually just took my order now, yeah, it would be ready when we get the thing. But you have this yeah. huge line going on because of the stupid fucked up process yeah. you're using. And then you'd yeah. see people that would pull out of the, 
the drive through line. They would disappear. They made a choice to buy there. Yeah. And then once they saw the long lines come, and the problems and they yeah. couldn't get access, they leave. And I was like, you know, They're if I ever, away money. Yeah. yeah if I ever, the marketing oh, operation should be fired for that. Yeah. If I ever owned a fast food restaurant, I'd have like a camera that would be on the drive through line and see how many people uh-huh. turned away and left uh-huh. and went, we, that, that's money. They just, wait, wait, bye, yeah. see you. And yeah, on the internet, you don't get to see that unless you have like, uh, I don't know, abandoned carts or something. But other than that, if people, like you say, if people are going in search and it's hard right now, I'm doing that a lot. I'm doing that on Yelp. Yeah. I'm doing that online. You know, every yeah. time I want to go out to eat, you know, uh, I yeah. got to go, Oh, what time in the open? And you know, and then I yeah. don't trust them anyway. So I got to call them yeah. and be like, you guys are really open, right? <laughs> yeah. All day. I was in Vegas four days ago. I went to my favorite sushi restaurant. You know, Vegas just opened up a week ago, right? Yeah, yeah, I know. It's kind of interesting. And it was packed. Everything uh, was packed. Like people, you could imagine people have been pent up for a few months, right? Now they want to go party. So I went to my favorite sushi place that I've been going for years. And the line was so long and the list to get on the, the thing to be able to get in was so long, they couldn't take me that night. Wow. And I was just so disappointed. I'm thinking... Dude, there's a pandemic going on, and I guess people don't really think it's serious or not, which is a whole nother topic for another show. So then I went to another rest, another sushi restaurant that was pretty good, but wasn't as good as the one that I like to go to, and they had a 40-minute wait. Holy shit. And they were packed, and all the restaurants were packed, and the parking lots were packed, and the casinos were full of people. Wow. And I thought, wow, these guys, if they, if they, like, these other folks, if they could just fix their marketing if they could get their operations in place, yeah, they can make up for all the lost revenues they had in the last three months. What was the, what was the name of the sushi place? So I know it when I go back to Vegas, I'm afraid of telling any, everybody. Cause every time I go, you. you can tell me it's after the Maryland show, Park. you can kind of whisper it to me and some, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you. Cause there's, there's a, there's two other restaurants that are almost as good. It's on Maryland Parkway and it's called Sakana sushi. And it's mm-hmm. in a strip mall where there's a Target and some other random little things. Like you'd never know that this is like a legit place because it's just there in a strip mall, right? It doesn't look mm-hmm. like anything. But mm-hmm. you go inside and I want to say it's $25.99 and you can order anything you want on the menu all day long. Mm-hmm. So it's, it is technically a buffet. But what happens is that you just order like in a regular sushi restaurant. You say, like, oh, I'll have the rainbow roll. I have, there's one that's called the burn your ass roll, which sounds terrible, but it's actually delicious. And you just keep ordering, you know, appetizers, you know, like shrimp tempura and miso soup and tempura ice cream and all oh, the things man. that you'd like to eat, right? You're just making the it hungry, man. fantastic. They have fresh fatty tuna, which is called Toro. Like if you're a sushi person, this is fresh. It's good. Like normally I don't trust buffet you and me. sushi anything, right? Cause it's like, uh, I don't really know about that. Right. Especially in Vegas, man. You don't know how long that's sitting in the back lot or sitting in but the back place, quarter. This place is good quality sushi. Mm-hmm. It's super cheap. I'm thinking maybe it's, maybe it's like a lot, you know, a money laundering front or something. Cause it's so good. Like maybe they're just doing it. I don't see how they're possibly making money when people like me come in. Like if you and I came in, they probably kick us out. <laughs> be, be like, no. like, right, well, right. We got to close for uh, coronavirus cleaning. Yeah. 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 Well, that's you know, I like awesome. to say that I'm, I'm a big data engineer or I'm, mm-hmm. I'm a big data engineer. There you go. Well, I'm a big, big, whatever, big. Um, so, uh, so you, you, you're uh, a big podcaster, Chris. I'm a big podcaster. There you go, my friend. So I was looking over your Blizz Nation, uh, teamblizznation.com. And this yeah. is pretty interesting. This is, uh, the training site that you use to help people learn to, to uh, um, well, a lot yeah. of different things. How to power, how we power today's uh, largest brands, uh, 20 time, yeah. 29 times and 41 times return on ad spend, uh, garnered 80 million views in a single video. Was that my porn? Was that my yeah. sex tape? No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> you and Robert Scoble together. Yeah. Yeah. That would be like uh, maybe like four five chance, Whatever years. niche, you'll find it. The, the, yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> God knows what that would be. Hey. Uh, we fueled our peers and brands so they can go to your website and check it out. Yeah. Team Blitz nation. And Team then Blitz I noticed nation. you have several different packages that are on here. People can learn from uh-huh. the blitz nation pro the blitz nation, uh, standard. Uh, you got yeah. some great referrals here for some wonderful people. 
uh, than I know personally. Um, yeah. And uh, uh, some people I don't know personally, evidently. I don't know. <laughs> You've got a lot of great reviews on here, so there you go. Um, and uh, well, I think it's great. I looked over the website and I was like, this, this sounds like uh, something I should probably get into. You've got all your courses that are on here where people can learn uh, all the different aspects of online marketing. Um, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be out of work here or are out of work, I should say, 44 million yeah. people right now. So wow. if you're looking for a second career and you want to learn some new tricks, uh, this may be the way for you to go to learn online marketing because God knows we're just going to have more of it, right? Yeah, this this situation we're in now is not temporary. Yeah. And, and the economy is going to be a challenge for a while, but uh, like you say, the, the, the costs are fitting the thing. I mean, the worst thing you can do in a times like these, like I, I, there was one uh, company we review products with, we hit them up once the um, quarantine stopped and I said, Hey, do you guys, are you, we need some more stuff to review and we're still open. That's, that was the big message we sent to a lot of people. Hey, we're still here. We're still doing reviews. Still doing podcasts, and uh, we survived, I guess, so far is the message. Um, and they're like, well, We don't know what we're doing with marketing. <laughs> I was like, What do you mean you don't know what you're doing with marketing? Well, we're not sure if we're even going to have marketing anymore. I'm like, What do you mean you're not going to have marketing anymore? You know, you got to have marketing. Like, <laughs> you don't need that. Great. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like, you can't. I, I meet so many people sometimes that they're just like, all we're going to do is put up a website and all this money comes in. You're like, no, oh, this is the start tell me about that. Yeah. Tell, tell me how that's going for you. <laughs> tell me, uh, <laughs> you what? You just don't, you just don't, uh, you know, open your wallet out the front door and money just falls into it. <laughs> it does, oh. That doesn't happen. <laughs> so, um, so some good advice from you is uh, right now is a good time to uh, either learn online marketing or be doing online marketing um, and they yeah. can do it fairly inexpensively. Yep. Awesome sauce. Dollar a day. Awesome sauce. A dollar a day. That, that was the thing you mentioned to me before, a dollar a day. What, what is that concept about? How does that work? It's about putting money in Mark Zuckerberg's pocket. <laughs> well, what is <laughs> no, that really? really? Or, you know, you name the whoever's social network or putting money in Google's pocket. Or, you know. So the idea of a dollar a day is that that is the minimum amount that you need to spend to test. And whether you're testing on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, whatever, you need to pay to play. So I think of this as social postage. You need to pay to deliver messages. So I shipped a capture card to one of our new people that's in the Philippines, because these, these camera capture cards are really hard to get because everyone's going online and whatnot. And I had a couple extra, so I was shipping them out. And it cost me $170 to ship it to the Philippines. Now, do I consider that advertising? Or when you're sending something through FedEx or UPS, do you consider that advertising? Yeah. Yes? I you mean, just want to. If you're sending it some, some sort of product to somebody, so, I guess. You know, or, you're mailing gifts to people, yeah. you're writing a letter to grandma, you're wishing someone happy birthday, you send them a card, right? Yeah. That is posted. Right. When you yeah. go to the post office and you send a stamp, I don't know what is the stamp now, 41 cents, or who knows what the price is. I don't right? even know. That's you are paying <laughs> for the delivery of a message or a package, right? UPS and Amazon and these guys, they they deliver two or three packages a day because I just I'm you know one click shopping happy. Mm -hmm. That is that's paying for that's postage, that's paying for delivery. And that's so when awesome. I think about getting my message out there about the products and services that I have and that you have. When mm -hmm. I think about having people understand what I care about and my stories and my background and interviewing customers and sharing my expertise and all of those things, and I'm paying for delivery so that people can see what I'm saying, even though I'm not selling, it's not advertising. Mm -hmm. It's delivery. I'm paying for delivery, right? Okay. I could go pick up my pizza at the pizza place or I can pay an extra $3 and have it come through Uber Eats. or and, and so it's going to be delivered to me. I'm paying to deliver. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm paying Google and Facebook and these other folks, what I want you to do is think about this is paying for delivery. It's not advertising. It's only advertising when it looks like an ad. When the nature of the package is buy my stuff, it's on sale. Here's products and features. Call my phone number. You know, I want you to call me now. Like those all these different ways of trying to sell mm -hmm. that's advertising hmm. but 
delivery is I want people to know who I am. We've done this for hundreds of chiropractors in the last couple of months. I told you about this before where we have chiropractors in cities all over the United States. And, and we've not just for chiropractors, but this is one example. And they're sharing stories of what they're cooking. They're sharing their dog. They're sharing walking around outside. They're sharing, what do you do with tennis elbow? And here's an exercise that you can do. Mm -hmm. They're sharing, let me tell you about the human anatomy. Let me tell you about what to do if you have a headache. Oh, call me. This is my phone number. We're still open. Mm -hmm. So they're making lots and lots of little videos of which only some of them are related to their practice. Mm -hmm. Isn't that funny? And the thing that's driving them more patience, even though things are in a crisis right now, their businesses, some of these guys, their businesses are increasing. It's because they're showing the humanity of who they are by talking about what they're doing at home or their favorite Netflix shows or how they're mowing their lawn or a new dish that they're trying or think that have nothing to do with whether that person's a good chiropractor or not. Those messages and videos, hanging out with their kids, doing exercises on Saturday morning, things that just show that they are humans, those videos are driving them leads. Mm -hmm. wow. And that is, that, that is puzzling the heck out of most small business owners. But you know, why does that work? Is it because they're building rapport in that way? Uh-huh. Yeah. And if you do a search in Salt Lake City, chiropractor, you know, bad back or whatever it might be, right? Mm -hmm. And then you see a list of all these, you're going to see there's a ton of chiropractors. Or if you do a search, there's going to be a ton of real estate agents or a ton of people that can fix your car or a ton of personal injury attorneys or a ton of like whatever Italian restaurants, right? There's always going to be a ton of these in whatever area you're competing in, right? Mm -hmm. And if you see a list of them, and one of them you've heard of, maybe it's whatever, you saw them on Facebook or Instagram, you saw a YouTube video where they were talking about something, even if it was not related, but the other ones you've never heard of, who are you going to click on first? That one. It's that one is that easy. So if you are a small business owner or you own a local business, if you know this one thing, the number one reason why small businesses don't get sales is they're not even seen. <laughs> they're in the dark. Right. It's like, we, uh, run, like putting content out there, having a website without advertising is like winking at a girl in the dark. That's a good she analogy. It, I love that. Don't. <laughs> she knows it. I mean, you know it, but she doesn't. Yeah. Right. So we need to pay for delivery. They need to know that you exist. Mm -hmm. And if you merely do things that are not purely buy my stuff, buy my stuff, call me now and you actually show that you're a human and you have different stages in the relationship. Everyone understands, you know, buy my stuff. Here's my phone number. Call me now. If you have a bad back, if you're, if you got in a car accident, I'm a personal injury attorney. I'm really tough. Call me. Right. All, everyone understands how to sell. You mm -hmm. need two stages before that, which is called why and how, and then to the what top, middle, bottom of the funnel, which is selling. So top of the funnel, your why kind of what you stand for. You care about your family. You go to church. You like to play tennis. You go hiking, whatever it is, right? Little stories about what you care about. How is you're sharing your knowledge? You're not selling. You're mm -hmm. talking about how to do stuff. And then the what is you're selling. So if you mm -hmm. have content in these three layers and you put videos out there and then you pay for the delivery, you will beat out 99% of the other people in your market. That is awesome. And you know, that's, 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 that's so true. You can pay been... me $10,000 for that. I just told you. Do I, oh, shit. Now I owe money. And anyone listening? If, if you were to pay me $10,000, this is what I would tell you. Awesome. You just got $10,000 worth of free advice from Dennis Yu. I mean, come on, guys. That's awesome sauce. Uh, Chris Voss will be sending billion to all the listeners. Uh, anyway, no, the, you know, you, you, that is so true. The People get tired of the sale thing, you know. You don't, and I come from in the old world of sales where you build a rapport before you sell. But you can see it, selling a mile away. You can see an yeah. ad a mile away. Yep. So don't do that. We're all too smart for ads. <clears throat> yeah. Hey, you, know, you get to sell, sell, sell. But you know, the, my, some of my favorite uh, videos of, of restaurants that I choose come from like Instagram or TikTok. Yeah. They're not on there selling, going sell, sell, sell. They like have videos up of like, hey, you want to see us cook a burger? And they'll show uh -huh. how they're behind the scenes. Prep and, yeah, behind the scenes. Yeah. And Documenting like, what you're doing. Oh, yeah, I'm going there. Interviewing your staff, making people salivate. Oh yeah. So, I mean, that's a new way to sell a sizzle because you can see the sizzle. You're like, oh, yeah. yeah. That was and then it shows that you're safe because the people are wearing masks because it's clean. Because how many times you go to a restaurant, you're wondering like, I wonder if it's dirty back there. Yeah. Yeah. That is one of the things you wonder about when you go. 
Um, and so uh, a lot of different companies, usually the big Fortune 500 companies, I've been seeing their ads and their emails and their apps, you know, saying, hey, we, we're clean. Uh, I think Papa John has one of the most uh, uh, upfront commercials that are like, we have a no touch process from beginning yeah. to end and we don't touch yeah. your pizza. And, you know, we just cough COVID-19 on, I'm, I'm just kidding. Um, but uh, that and the rest of their ad is like, we got rid of that racist CEO we had. Um, yeah. <laughs> Papa John's, what can you say uh, about those folks? Like- uh, I, they did make a good move. I think they supported, they did something that, that was good. I think they supported Black Lives Oh, they pulled out of the Tucker Carlson uh, show of Average. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. So that was, a, that, that was a good way to clean up the brand move on their part. So advertising is uh, an important thing to do. Doing the basics. Uh, you know, it's funny. I still see people that nowadays that don't answer their Facebook fan pages. I don't know what the fuck that's yeah. about. Like, I'll send them messages and they just don't answer. I've had yep. some that like six months later they'll answer and I'll be like, what the fuck was I talking to you about? Yeah. And I'll exactly. be like, I, I don't know. I think everybody was just making so much money before this crisis. They just didn't have to give a fuck anymore. And now yeah. they do. Yeah. Well, money's a little tougher to come by. Better. You know, you got to actually start doing some marketing. Yeah. I got to do some marketing and you have the time to now. So there's that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, it's a great place to save, uh, employee costs, uh, save your employees, hopefully, et cetera, et cetera. We've been in a lot of different places. Um, I think, don't you write for ad age? I did. Yeah. Ad yeah. week too. A lot yeah. of places. Yeah. And you've, you've written all too. over the place to teach people. So people should really check you out at Dennis you.com digital marketer, speaker, agency builder. Um, what else do you have going on, Dennis? What else uh, can you tell us about you and what we're you're building? Doing? Lots of courses. There you and go. We're training up these small businesses. This is stuff that we sold for seventy five, seventy five hundred or ten thousand dollars. We've made free temporarily. Wow. Because businesses are struggling, so we just put the training out there. And we, as an agency, have operated and spent over a billion dollars on Google and Facebook ads. So we are teaching from our direct example. Wow. We're not just saying, oh, we heard this other guy on the internet say that this is something you should do. We are documenting everything that we have done step by step. And when we've done, when we've done something many times, we've turned that into courses. So mm-hmm. the courses are helping two kinds of people. One is that local business owner, and they're making the same dumb, dumb mistakes over and over again. We know what they are. We've seen it thousands of times over and over again. We understand that they're not experts in digital marketing, so we don't fault them for not knowing about these things, but we want to let them know what they are, show them how to fix it. They can go through the courses and step-by-step fix it themselves or have someone else fix it. If they want to have us fix it, we have thousands of young adults and not so young adults that are certified digital marketing agencies. So we are teaching the local business owners how to drive leads and fix their digital marketing, but we also have done for you services by people that we've trained up. And this creates a good ecosystem because we are creating jobs and we're also helping local businesses at the same time. And that's what warms my heart. And I feel good doing that. So Everyone we are actually would. less of an agency and more of a training company that brings both sides together. That's awesome. That's a brilliant model, Dennis. I'm sure I don't have to tell you that. Right? <laughs> well, we're, just, we're lucky because it's, it's not anything to do with me. It's mm-hmm. the fact that folks like Google and Instagram and GoDaddy and Digital Marketer and Social Media Examiner, these guys all believe in what we're doing. And yeah. I've been honored to be able to speak and write and teach on these platforms and social media examiner is the largest platform for social media marketers digital marketer through tnc and their other outlets is the biggest outlet for people that want to learn how to do digital marketing so they asked me to come teach on digital marketing i'm more than happy to do that that draws in a ton of folks who want to learn to be pros but at the same time we have the demand side so my buddy Glenn Vo is the number one dentist out there that does marketing. He's a dentist, still a practicing dentist. And he had 24,000 dentists that follow him because he's wow. so good. And guess what? Those 24,000 dentists all need help with their digital marketing. <laughs> so we have his group here and then we have all the other people that we're training. And so I have the Glenn Vo of every one of these other industries. Wow. The top chiropractor, the top real estate estate agent, the top mortgage broker, the top garage door guy, the top whatever. And all of them are what we call a lighthouse. 
a lighthouse meaning they're the representative for all the other people. So if you're a dentist, mm. are you going to listen to some random internet marketer talk about how they can drive more leads? Or are you going to listen to a practicing dentist who you know and who's he's shown his results, he's shown how he's doing stuff. Are you going to, who are you going to listen to, right? Yeah. And if you're a personal injury attorney, right? And you want to increase your leads because you don't understand, you, you've watched Breaking Bad and you know Better Call Saul or, you know, whatever. <laughs> and you want to drive more leads. Are you going to talk to a random internet marketer or are you going to talk to Ali Awad, who is the number one personal injury attorney in Georgia that's demonstrating how he's doing it as, as a personal injury attorney himself, who also is a digital marketer driving leads for his firm and helping other personal injury attorneys drive leads. Who are you going to listen to? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. You got, you built that network, the light, a lighthouse. I've never heard that term before, but that's a awesome. Lighthouse is a great example. Yeah, right. it really so is. Example, it's a beacon we of teach light. The, we teach the black diamond club, which is hundreds of chiropractors and other medical professionals. And Dr. Sean Dill and Lacey Book are chiropractors. They actually own a practice, a, a franchise called The Specific. It's a chiropractic franchise business in a box model for chiropractors. And we've been working with them and teaching them how they can grow their practice. We've been teaching live inside the groups where hundreds of these folks, these chiropractors are showing up and they're learning how to increase their business. And so we are teaching the chiropractors. We're, we have... Sean and Lacey as our lighthouses, because if you're a chiropractor, you probably have heard of these folks. You've heard of the Black Diamond Club. And mm -hmm. so because we teach inside the Black Diamond Club, and then we offer chiropractic done for you digital marketing packages, why would you go anywhere else if you're a chiropractor? Exactly. I mean, I've seen so many people that waste so much money on trial and error. They're like, it can't be that hard. <laughs> I've had people do that podcast to me. They'll, they'll be like, you made it look so easy. And then they'll go do it. And, uh -huh. and then they're like, it's just pretty hard, Chris. And you're like, no, that's why you hire professionals and experts. Yeah. It looks easy, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. And the, the thing is, if you're really good, you make it look really easy. Yeah. And then people just go, uh, wow, this is much yeah. harder. But I think this is brilliant what you guys have built. And you guys have this network. Uh, what's the best way if some people want to use you to advise them, consult with them for advertising is blitz nation, the best way to get a hold of them or is it directly through blitz nation is more of the coaching program okay. and more of the training. But if you want to see both sides of it, go to blitzmetrics.com. Okay. B L I T Z M E T R I C S. And you can come in as a digital marketer where you want to learn to be certified or you can come in as a business where you want to buy services or get some training on how to do it yourself. Awesome. Either way. Sauce. Right. You're e you either want to get trained or you want to get this stuff done for you. Mm -hmm. Awesome sauce. Maybe companies can put their uh, 12 year olds, uh, kids. <laughs> do this. I always think it's funny when people go, yeah, we're firing the professional social media marketer and we're going to put our kid in it. And you're just like, seriously? <laughs> oh, well, the kid does Instagram and TikTok videos, so he must know how to do social media marketing. Right, right. <laughs> there you go. Well, um, yeah, I've loved it. I've seen you post on Facebook uh, some different examples, some A-B testing examples over the years. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you might as well buy into a uh, system that works and and can uh, help people get to know uh, everything they're doing. So awesome sauce, man. Awesome sauce. you got a lot of stuff cooking. What do you see for the future of uh, Facebook marketing costs and, and where – uh, marketing for social media is going to go. The costs are climbing back up on Facebook. Uh, during as the economy is opening up, as people are spending their stimulus and PPP funds, it's not going to return to where it was a year ago. I think mm -hmm. it'll get most of the way back. And I predict that there will be another social network that will usurp mm -hmm. Facebook in the same way that Facebook usurps Google and Google usurp Microsoft. And there's going to be another one. There's a good chance it could be TikTok mm -hmm. or it could even be Snapchat or it could be LinkedIn as a sleeper. But what, here's the thing to know. Instead of trying to predict the stock market or who's going to be the next winner, mm -hmm. you should invest wherever your customers are now. And right now, it's a Google and Facebook game. It's basically a Coke and Pepsi game mm -hmm. because Google owns YouTube and Facebook owns Instagram. So between those four, you have over 80% of the market in the United States at least. You know, yeah. China with Weibo and Renren Ren and other, and Russia with 
contact if you contact the another tool it's different but in the united states it's a google and facebook game and if you learn to do the fundamentals and you do them well which is creating one minute videos into that three by three grid that you then distribute onto your blog and twitter and email and facebook and twitter like all the other places where you your content creation is independent of your channel level tactics mm -hmm. that will get you 90 percent of the way there and if you are a small business or a local business and you're better than 90 plus percent of the other players, that's really all you need. You're not trying to innovate and be a TikTok star or be famous on Pinterest or what have you, right? You're just, if your goal is as a business owner to drive sales of your products and services, that's where you need to be. And you'll hear Gary, Gary Vaynerchuk and these other people say, you need to jump on this new thing and jump on that thing. And that's how they generate attention. And they yeah. get you all confused and have FOMO and throw you off base. Look, the way to tell whether someone's a pro or not, Chris, is focus on those fundamentals. Definitely. Most all definitely. day long. Well, that, that's what the masters are doing. They do the fundamentals. That's what I do all day long. I make one minute videos. I boost them on Facebook for a dollar a day. Am I aware that there's all these other super pro techniques? Yes. But even all the other pros that I talk to, they focus on the fundamentals. Yeah. Fine. Spend 10% of your time chasing those cool, shiny object, red squirrel, whatever th kinds of things, but don't waste your time. To, uh, just... 89% fundamentals, you'll be fine. I mean, at TikTok, I mean, I don't know. I know the YouTube market is like 10 to 15 uh, year olds. I mean, I don't even know what the TikTok market is. for. Hey, but there's I mean, a lot of traffic on TikTok and there's a lot of influencers yeah. selling a lot of garbage. I would ask you this question. Like in spite of all the people talking about you need to be on TikTok and it's so big and blah, blah, blah. Do you know of an actual business, not an influencer, consultant, whatever, an actual business that is using TikTok to make money? I actually saw for the first time yesterday, uh, I guess I'm giving away that I'm on TikTok, uh, Little Caesars Pizza. And they had, okay. well, they that's had a, a chain, video. but I'm talking, yeah. Oh. Chain, you, chains can use, can, can hop and surf on trends, mm -hmm. but I'm talking about like a chiropractor or a plumber. The one, the one company I've been seeing doing well is doing what you're talking about. They sell these uh, seasonings for like uh, ribs and stuff. Ribs, meats. A lot of companies can do that, yeah. Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? And so, so that'll work because they're surfing attention trends. Yeah. But if you're not surfing an attention trend where you're trying to do like a Super Bowl kind of commercial or you have some kind of gimmick that goes viral, mm -hmm. because all those are counting on going viral, outside of that, people that are, you know, you're selling furniture, you're selling socks, you're selling, you know, oral B toothbrushes, people that are selling traditional products and services. I mean, you're going to find examples of people that do things to generate attention. Definitely. TikTok is a great attention generator, but I'm talking about mainstream businesses. If so, if you don't have the budget of a little Caesars pizza, if you don't have the cool factor of some kind of seasoning company or a swimsuit company that shows things that are basically halfway pornographic, it's not going to work. Yeah. Sorry. I'm just being realistic. Is there a chance that, that you could win the lottery? Yes. But is it worth your time? It seems like a gamble. <laughs> it seems like a gamble. You might as well go with something that gives you uh, direct results. Yeah, if you like to gamble, go for it. But yeah. I tend to do things that I want to do things that don't have a lot of risk. I'm lazy. I just sure. don't like losing lots and lots of money just because I want to innovate and impress other people. I'd rather have a successful business than be out there trying to, rent Lamborghinis and fluff my ego. There you go. That sounds like a smart way to go. Well, Dennis, we appreciate you having the show. Anything more we need to know as we part ways? I want to see you make one minute videos. Okay. You're spending time with me and Chris and Chris has done 500 of these and you enjoy Chris because he's entertaining and he's got that very white voice. <laughs> Don't just listen and be entertained and laugh. I want to see you grow your business. And if you're not here and doing something to better yourself, I gotta ask you, what are you doing? Yeah. Take some action. Share something that you've learned. Implement it. Tell a friend. Subscribe to Chris Voss on YouTube, <laughs> on Twitter, on the Chris Voss Show dot com, on all these other places. You know, follow me. But whatever you do, take action. Take action. Your dog is taking action right yeah, the now. Dog, so the dogs agree. <laughs> there you go. There you go. We got the audience in there. So everyone, check out Dennis Dash U dot com. Dennis dash y you dot com dennis has been a good friend of mine for years on facebook and i love his content he's an awesome dude a wonderful dude i gotta hang out with him one time in vegas when i get back there 
Yeah, uh, man, let me know. Post COVID nineteen. <laughs> oh, was everyone wearing masks when you saw them in Vegas? Mm, sort of. Oh, God. They, they have these weird rules where you're supposed to wear the mask when you're on your way to the table, uh-huh. but when you're at the table, it doesn't matter. And we were in California the last three days, and it was the same thing. So we, when we were on our, you know, when they when you're in the in the front and they're about to seat you, so uh-huh. you're wearing your mask for like five or ten seconds on the way to your table, and then you take it off. Oh my so god! What's the logic in that? Right. I saw I saw a video someone made. This kid the guy sitting in a one arm bandit in Vegas. Yeah. And he's got a cigarette sticking out the side of the N95 mask. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like lighting it and he keeps going like this. Yeah. <laughs> shit. So there you go. Anyway, thanks to my audience for tuning in. We certainly appreciate it. We certainly appreciate Dennis for being here as well. Go learn some interesting stuff from his uh, company, Blizz Nation, Blitz Nation, excuse me, Blitz Nation. Um, and uh, more about Dennis. You want to friend him on all the social intermediate webs. Um, anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. Go to youtube.com for just Chris Voss. Hit that bell notification button. Go to the CVPN or Chris Voss Podcast Network.com and subscribe to all nine of our podcasts. Holy crap, we had some great interviews wow. today, including Dennis, and we'll look forward to having him on again someday. So thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll see you next time.